Hello, everybody. So as Seti already um, presented me, and the two projects that I will uh, represent today are Human Abyss and Identifying Drive System. They are uh, separate separate projects, but uh, the methodology and the process of the, um, of the two projects are um, typically the same or are, like the approach is um, eminent from um, how the organic can be uh, related to um, an artificial life or how I can um, make uh, alternative uh, form of lives based on organic um, forms or on um, a common imaginary, uh, imaginary consciousness or subconsciousness. Well, I will start with the Human Abyss project, which is um, my main project and all was uh, triggered by um, a documentary that I saw on the abyss or the um, uh, abyss life on the ocean and all those creatures that I saw uh, seemed so realistic to me. They were like um, that um, word was so uh, surrealistic to me because um, the characteristic of the abyss world was uh, really um, contradictory uh, because it was a lot of pressure there it was a dark uh, dark uh, space it was uh, really cold there and uh, the scientists were really intrigued by uh, a form of life um, uh, that they um, was uh, researching about so um, I will start the research on how um, I, it was based on um, uh, a technique that I called monographs and um, monologues and monographs as a process of creation of my word, because it was based on uh, notes and on um, drawings. And then all the word was based on a lexical field that I uh, took on, took from that um, from, from that area, and it was based on darkness, pressure, um, uh, contradictory poles that can hold an entire ecosystem. So um, I made like a little presentation. So I will share the screen with you guys, and. Um, I don't know, I'm so, mm, presentation, is, is that, yeah, I think it works. So um, the research uh, here uh, is based on um, all the notes that I, uh, that are inspir inspired, uh, I was inspired by that word and it was like uh, two, Pose, two contracted, contracted every pose between um, a hostile world that holds an, uh, a form of life. And then I was, uh, all the, the lexical field that I took from there, uh, it was like uh, the same as the unconscious mind. So the unconscious mind was based on dark, dark area that holds an entire um, uh, characteristic that we don't know about yet. And it seems so um, unknown for us. So all that uh, lexical field wa was made for uh, as an antro abyssal field. So it was made for from, um, um, I don't know, epistemological, epistemological inquiries that holds um, all the um, uh, blocked area and all the um, uh, characters that we are censoring and blocking and uh, they are lost and I considered all the unconscious mind as a fossil and as a lot of sedimentations that holds um, some characteristics that are blocked there and as, as a black uh, I don't know, as a black cube that we have an input, 
in it and an output, but we don't know the mechanism that working on uh, it's working on that area. But <clears throat> based on those notes, well, uh, I don't know if it's working here. So, so based on these notes, I try to make um, creatures that are artificial, but that are based on um, uh, anatomy or based on um, those creatures that I saw on the, on the abyss. But I try to put characteristics from um, unconscious mind or from um, blocked area from, of the mind. And I try to make all those pieces, but that, uh, that uh, are uh, like artificial or bio hybrids that I call. And um, with that creatures, I try to um, make zonation of all the that work. <laughs> This donation was based on uh, how we can um, go further or go deeper in the unconscious mind. So based on uh, oceanic uh, zonation, I tried to classify um, the zonation of the human abyss too as a scientific way to make that artificial uh, world. So based on that, uh, sorry, some, some notes are uh, written in French, so I'll try to translate uh, with, um, uh, with this presentation. So uh, the zonation was based on how to go deeper and how to go uh, on complexity of the of this subconscious mind. So the first zone was the white zone or the black spot zone, and it's the first, the first uh, area that are holding like um, lapses or all the, all the, um, I don't know how to say it, but all the, um, uh, the things that um, we are facing for first as we discover the unconscious mind, and we are discovering the all the, uh, all the notes that we can uh, do, that we can't explain. On based on that, all the creatures was made like um, lifelike word and based on uh, some anatomy that I collect and I recreate all the cr creatures based on um, something that we saw before, but we can't uh, really identify. So, and the second zone is the latent zone and it's based on morbidities or on phallic uh, forms or on the pervert um, uh, dreams and that they are based on the things that we are more complex or more deeper on the unconscious mind. And then we go to the sed sedimentary zone, which is based on layers that we um, hold um, like years and accumulate on like, um, uh, I don't know it in English, I'm, I'm really francophonic, so I'm trying to translate all the notes based on um, this so um, and then uh, this this area holds like really primitive forms of life and really primitive for the thoughts so I try to um, based on this I try to uh, create the creatures uh, like in circles or in primitive form so after that, after that, I classify all the zones. I try to make all the those um, uh, bio bio creatures with with based on uh, forms of lives that really exist, but they are really um, uh, mixed it on. But we can we can identify some creatures, but it's not um, it's not really existing. So I'm gonna uh, show you guys some creatures. And all these creatures uh, that I'm showing, they are mixed up, but it, each zone holds uh, specific creatures. So I'm just gonna uh, show you the drawings of these creatures. But with the research, I, I want to mention that 
I, for the references, I used um, the imaginary taxonomy that uh, Willem Flusser, the philosopher, and Louis Beck, the illustrator, worked on the fabulatory uh, and um, imaginary creatures and imaginary artificial life based on scientific approach, but with um, with the classify classifying all the creatures in like um, um, nom with nomenclature and with monographs about it, so we can um, put on a logic uh, specific logic on those um, on those area. So when we go further, I worked a lot on the, the deepest area of this of this word, and the sedimentation of uh, the, the 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 layers. So when we go deeper, for it gets darker. Simply, it gets darker, and all the um, the creatures that I create was made on layers. So I try to to put on all the fragments. On layers and try to uh, create based on forms of life uh, other creatures that doesn't exist simply by adjusting or by mixing all the forms that I get but there's a lot of uh, phallic and there's a lot of uh, primitive forms uh, identities in here so to go further for for this, I I try to make um, like monographs on this and try to make nomenclature for the creatures. So each so each creature have its own characteristic. How it grows, how it how uh, what does it eat, how uh, it was made, and all the names was based on a Latin. Um, on the Latin name of a syndrome, so it was made. Uh, it was made based on uh, complexes or complexity of the human mind, and if every creature, every creature has uh, its own species, where it does it live and the zone it lives in. So uh, these kind of uh, process made me uh, make like to categoric. Uh, to categorize all those creatures and to make them in their own zones. So, um, I want to show you some. Um, I was part of residencies and I always take the um, workspace as a laboratory place. So, it was always like a scientific way to present all those imaginary creatures and to make them like uh, real creatures or um, make them a lifelike word. So every uh, space work that I work in, I try to make it as a laboratory and every people were uh, trying to understand where do those creatures come from. So uh, I try to make all the um, presentations uh, as um, drafts or researchers and I try to, um, mix on all those creatures in a play in um in sort of plates or in sort of um ongoing research so people try to understand because people uh, sometimes they think that they are real but they are trying to um try to understand how do they feel about them so all the um, presentation was uh going on like um like um, laboratory or like um, a wormhole of possible words like this. So this was, I don't know, it, it was like a um, um, word that can exist in a way, but with all the references, all those organic references, I try to um, ask some questions and I try to uh, understand why, how people, um, uh, uh, how people, how observers can uh, feel about them, and they always try to uh, understand what they are seeing, and it was always like seeking some um, 
further questions about them. And there's a lot of people who doesn't even know uh, the, the, the abyss and doesn't even know all those creatures that uh, are uh, already uh, living somewhere. And all those uh, kind of possible words was trying to make a space, uh, time-space quantum possible um, um, uh, I don't know how to say it and people were really intrigued about this and they were trying to um, even classify uh, species and even like trying to uh, when they say creature they're trying to put in um, the zone on trying to put it on the specific species so this was uh, a really like short um, presentation for the human abyss words. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll move on to the next project, which is um, identifying drive system, which comes uh, after this project. And the question was how really people um, can how do they feel when they see something strange and, and something really not existing? Do they really try to identify something that they saw to really uh, push away all that ambiguities on it? And they try to understand because when they see something like really, really absurd, they try to see, does it look like an eye or does it look like, um, I don't know, does it look like a tree? And they try to really identify this. So, I don't know, maybe to classify this and to move on, or maybe like to um, all those primitive and all those uh, common imaginary always uh, come up to those guys. And I went to simply go to the museums and I tried to, to understand all this and try to uh, ask all the observers uh, when they are uh, in front, uh, a specific um, when they are in front, uh, specific um, absurd uh, artwork, and they are trying to always talk about discomfort and disgust, and they are trying to to say um, they are trying to take to to be curious about it but they always talk about disgust. And this was like, uh, as always, I try to um, take those references about Willem Flusser, the philosopher. He talks about uh, the nausea, um, the nausea hierarchy or the disgust taxonomy, because he, t he was trying to understand all those um, classification. And he, he said like, when they think or when they, um, the form is uh, suggest disgust or something, or when it is for, when it is um, far away from us, it doesn't even like uh, have um, um, doesn't even like have our interest because he was talking about objectum and he was trying to say that when the thing is away from the human. Um, questions or from the human like um, forms like it 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 um, it suggests uh, all those um, um, taxonomy of uh, to classify that thing in a nausea thing and it is like away from us so we classify it away from us and we try he tries to, to put on a classification based on bio lifelike forms and then we go further on it and we go like uh, anima or artificial like um, uh, uh, artificial like forms so we go further on it and we push away all those things so um, it was like um, I don't know if I can uh, I, I don't think so I'm gonna um, share this video because it was uh, a little bit um, uh, I don't know I'm going to put on uh, like some I don't know. well 
I'm going to put some parts of it. And people were trying to, to understand all those. Uh, sorry, I'm going to, sh to share the screen again. Perkins, and I live in Santa Fe, New Mexico, USA. David Cunningham, I also live in Santa Fe. Okay. What's fascinating is that I don't have an explanation, and that's what really fascinates me is when I can look at something and not comprehend where it came from. I like that. And for me, I like to see things that I have never seen before, because it piques my curiosity, and I want to know where did it come from. I want to know what you're asking. Where did it come from? And I'm always curious how it was made, because I make things. And I, I like to see someone being original, trying very hard to get it, as uh, Bacon said, from his soul. His video was excellent because he explained this, that he's trying to pare things down to the essence. He's trying to pare his subject down to the essence. I think that's what these guys were trying to do with Dada and the surrealism, that it's coming from dreams maybe, it's coming from visceral feelings. So this was a part, but there's a lot of, um witnesses and as I call them and they were trying really to understand how the origin and the identity of a foreign object as we said and and voila it's, it's still a, like an ongoing so, a research and I'm trying to 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 understand where do uh, where do like uh, those like uh, semiotic new semiotic forms or language are coming from and and what they feel about uh, looking around and um, or that the artist get his family, family uh, I think uh, family family gets many things about artists' mind. For the first question, I think, face to me, it provokes first the curiosity, if I don't know it. It's not so simple as that, because it can also provoke the feeling of the feeling. And if it provokes the feeling of the feeling, I'm not very curious. Mais, euh, mais dans la plupart des cas et dans les œuvres que j'ai vues ici, c'est plutôt la curiosité. La deuxième chose, je pense, enfin, si, si c'est euh, le principe de, de simplification, enfin, si, si l'art a d'une certaine manière une, une fonction de simplification pour faire comprendre l'art à tout le monde et pas seulement à, à les personnes qui savent déjà les... Euh, les moyens d'interprétation de l'art qu'on voit en ce moment, je trouve ça plutôt bien. Enfin, je suis, euh, j'ai plutôt une, une point de vue euh, comme ça. Donc euh, voilà, c'est euh, la curiosité, la simplification. Ah oh, mais est-ce que c'est si simple de trouver une réponse Je sais pas. Ça, c'est du, c'est la fantaisie du, de l'artiste qui, qui vit dans son propre monde 
et la fantaisie du, du public qui vit dans un autre monde. Et je pense que la fonction de l'artiste, c'est aussi de, de faire interagir de, mm -hmm. une sorte particulière euh, ces deux mondes et de faire réfléchir euh, euh, à travers le moyen du, de l'œuvre euh, ces deux mondes. That's it. Um, I think I'm done here. So thank you for listening. And um, well, I'm, I'm thank you for listening. And uh, I'm not sharing the screen. Yeah. And um, voila. If you have any questions after, and I'm here. Thank, thank you for the great presentation. Thank you. Let's see if any of the participants have any comments or questions for Bushra. We'll open up the discussion with the artist. Um, I do have a question. I think um, going back to the Human Abyss project, uh, what world do you see these creatures ex existing in? Did you ever think of that aspect of the project or just the creatures themselves? Well, based on um, the unconscious mind and it's like a lost blocked area that we are censoring and it's like it's all the research but was based on the sensor um, the sensor is uh, I, I don't know the, um, that word that we are hiding and it's like um, the consciousness is based on uh, a fossilized unconsciousness and it's based on a blocked area and it's like far away or it's like um, a hidden a hidden fossil 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 and it's like it's still like a fabulatory imaginary word but I think it's like um, a far really far away from us but it's based on uh, a common uh, unconsciousness maybe I mean I I think of Dali of course mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a lot of the surreal creatures that inhabit those spaces and how people interact with that but they, then I can also always envision the landscape that they exist in too mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I wonder you know yes it's coming from the subconscious these creatures but if you know, you had thought of, you know, the space that they might exist mm -hmm. in visually, what that might look like. Because some, yeah. you said, as you went into the darker aspects of the mind space, then you layered them on top of a space that was darker as well, too, like the abyss. Yeah. Also, I wonder if you've seen the movie, The Abyss, as sure. well, too. <laughs> the documentary, but the, yeah, yeah. like, fiction one yeah sure I know that uh, it's uh, the project is based on fauna it, it's it's based on um, um, artificial um, animals and always people talk about uh, where's the fauna and the flora and it's uh, where's all the um, uh, as you said all the um, words in it and how does it work but I don't know I was really like um, approaching this based on um, bio-hybrid um, animals or anima and artificial animals but um, yeah I, I, I I'm thinking about how to make it on because I always try to make a poetic video on it and try to um, and try to um, suggest the atmosphere and suggest uh, all the how do they um, work or how, how do they interact between them but it's still work I'm still working on this and how do they interact between them I really love how you put together the research and the drawings and the analysis even in French it was quite lovely but very well organized and beautiful great thank you so much thank you Bushra, Hello. Like... Uh, hey. Okay, sorry, you go first. Oh, I had a question to Bushra. I'm wondering in the human abyss, when you talk about the different layers, what's the mm -hmm. relationship between these layers? Um, are these layers undergoing some sort of metamorphosis? 
Do they possess varying forms? Mm -hmm. What about the creatures? Do the creatures transform by moving between layers? Do they already exist in multiple layers? Well, um, simply the layers were, was um, made based on time. So all those uh, uh, fossilized creatures was uh, uh, taking form under layers of time layers. So all those creatures was, I, to make them, I used um, previous drawings. So all the drawings that I made in the in the previous zone, it was cut off and I put, uh, took all the forms and put on layers. So with time, I, I've got uh, new creatures. So all the creatures was based on um, previous creatures and with time I've got other creatures, but they came after the first research. May I also um, pose a question? Yeah, hello. <clears throat> Hi, Basha. Very Hi. spectacular work. Really enjoyed Thank it. You. Um, I was wondering, yeah, I was wondering what's your take on the notion of trauma? Mm -hmm. Since uh, um, you have mentioned in your presentation the concept unconscious and, and human abyss as the title follows. So I, I'd like to know what's your take on the concept of trauma? Well, is it um, uh, relevant? I'm, I'm not sure. Well, I, I try to um, get away from all the syndromes and all the trauma things and to take really light specific um, complexes. But all the, um, all the word was based on like uh, common feelings or a common uh, sensorized, um, a common blocked areas. So um, maybe like uh, the the deepest the deepest area or the deepest uh, zone was um, talking about um, what we all all kind of feel in a way or like we, when we uh, face. Um, uh, something uh, um, traumatizing, and it it goes um, and it goes. Um, um, uh, I can't find it in English, and it goes um, bigger. And maybe like we hold it in a specific area, and it grows with us, and uh, with time, it it um, it. It goes bigger but we can't understand but we have to put uh, uh, to search on all those layers to uh, to to go uh, to the first primitive form of it and try to understand it and uh, try to take that um, uh, primitive form of it or try to take that um, abstract form maybe I don't know if I if yeah, I, yeah. <clears throat> If I may, I'd like to uh, allude to something. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the um, canon of psychoanalysis and their take on the concept of trauma, especially early psychoanalysis like frenzy. Um, uh, they see the frenzy specifically has a concept, the original trauma, mm -hmm. and he's referring to the um, very distinction between from or inorganic into in uh, into organic this mm -hmm. this separation this separation from inorganic into organic and mm -hmm. he sees he sees that as the original the first the initial uh, trauma and and uh, i think um, maybe it's worth uh, considering that because um, as you said primitive uh, I see that as, as the most, the ultimate primitive uh, trauma. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's interesting because, you know, we all came out of oceans, right? Yeah. And that, that, it was that's the origin, a, yeah. Exactly. And maybe that's why uh, beaches are very comforting. And, yeah. and the, 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 the sound of roaring waves of the ocean. But 
I, I really liked it because uh, you can speculate uh, a lot um, according to your artwork on the concept of trauma, I guess, and the 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 the, the ensuring ensuring uh, and and ensued concepts afterward. For example, stratification. For mm -hmm. example, how 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 that affects uh, the the primitive uh, picture in the unconscious psyche as as a creator as an artist i mean yeah and uh, always uh, there's a uh, Wilhelm reich who talked about character queries and it talks about how uh, those like uh, metaphorical things that we can um, feel or we can like uh, as freud said we can like we don't tr we can't um we can't um, understand and with the character queries it's made like um in a physical way and he tries like to um put it in a physical way because it was like uh we can feel it in the muscles and we can feel it in a in a organic way so um every like um unconscious feeling or every um uh unseen things we can have it in an organic thing and we can see it um um how to say it differently maybe yes, yes and and um, okay I, I just want to add oh you we want to continue with the others right yeah we have a raised hand here behrang if you have a question you can go ahead Oh yes, hello, I'm here. Hey. I don't know if you're hearing me well because I'm not yeah. in a proper area, I'm in the mountains, if you can hear me well. Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for your presentation, it is fabulous actually. Um, well, my question is not particularly about your project. I uh, really enjoyed when you were uh, explaining about the subject and what, what you were thinking of but this is uh, part of um, uh, my curiosity that i ask of all the artists usually that how do you choose your pictorial language and uh, how, how do you um how, how do you find yourself in between mimetics and aesthetics what's your position about aesthetics mm -hmm. so um all those creatures as uh, was based on um real anatomy so I took on sometimes I take notes and I took um, fragments from real anatomy I took like um, drawings from organic things or um, I, sometimes I go further on a primitive form so I let myself draw and I don't take any references so all those uh, fragments that I get or put on um, a creatures that is kind of um, in harmony, put in a harmony way, and then all those creatures was um, it was a, a year work, a one year work. So I've got my own repertoire, and and I've got my own um, references. But when I got when I got creatures, I came further with that. I've got uh, with that creatures, and I try to. Um, put on a creature that can be uh, can live with uh, with that creature but um, before I make creatures I was um, making uh, the atmosphere that they are living in and the zone that I are living in and based on complexity and based on unconscious um, treats I try to um, make um, and translate in a drawing what can uh, look like that complexity or what can look like that um, block thing or th these creatures if i uh, for example if i talk about a lapsus i was uh, i was trying to make um, a creature that is based on um, error and it's based on a negative and a positive uh, poles that are living in uh, together so the creatures was based on a black and white um, 
polls and I try to translate it uh, graphically. But after that, I've got my own uh, repertoire based on fragments between all these notes that I take. So at the end, is it important for you to have it a kind of, uh, like, um, when you're presenting your work, is it important for you to have a kind of formal uh, composition or is it just a kind of archival uh, thing for you? Well, it's like, uh, it's still like imaginative, imaginative and a fabulatory um, word, but it's really like based on uh, what people feel or what people can, because I was really intrigued by what the observers was saying about all the scriptures that they are facing, mm. uh, because all the um, people that they are seeing uh, every different uh, angle of it. And I was really intrigued by it and to hear them, what they feel when they are faced with that creature. And sometimes people can feel the same thing. And I was like really uh, enjoying all those um, um, uh, um, feelings, what, what people feel. And uh, with one creature's Sometimes people feel the same thing and it's really interesting, but it's still like um, uh, an imaginative for me, for me. All right, thank you very much for your answer. Thank you. And at the, by the end, do, do you, uh, I mean, I don't know how, how this is gonna work, but if you have more pictures of your presentations, I'm very curious to see yeah. how uh, you, you present your work. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank I, you, bye. I will share that with you. Sure, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we have a question from Aria, but we're going to save it for the end of after all the presentations. If you have any more questions, you can type it in the sidebar. And we'll Maybe you want to answer this one, then we can move to this yeah. one. Okay. okay, so Arya is asking, the anatomical drawings have historically also roots in surgical practices. How would you imagine this interaction between you and the creature to happen? Does it require surgical or destructive intervention or not? Well, I think, uh, as I said, maybe i was working on the uh, opposite because the creatures was made of uh, fragments and it was made uh, from uh, details that i took from anatomical uh, pictures or it was like uh, really iconographic uh, but it it worked on the other side because it was fragments that i make in a harmonic way but not the um, the opposite. So it was made on fragments, but not a destructive way. Maybe that the destructive uh, intervention was was when I um, was um, writing about those creatures because it, uh, I made on um, I took all the with the imaginary taxonomy and with all those plates. All the all creatures, uh, all creatures was having a detailed um, um, uh, notes. So the creatures was having the abdomen, the head, the name of the head, and uh, how do they uh, uh, interact? So that's it. <laughs> Very interesting. So if you guys have any more questions, type it in the sidebar and we'll go over it at the end. I think for the sake of time, we can move to the second presentation. Bosha, thank you so much for your thank fascinating you so much, presentation. Thank you. Thank you.